This is Seven National News and in our top story, the UNHCR has praised the UAE's outstanding support towards improving humanitarian conditions faced by those in Pakistan due to floods and natural disasters. UNHCR's representative in Pakistan, Neil Wright, was quoted as saying that he is following up with pride and appreciation the projects implemented by the UAE in Pakistan as per the directives and initiatives of the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. One of the pilot projects includes the necessary infrastructure of roads, bridges, schools and hospitals, health centres and basic services, as well as the provision of water for the community who have faced difficult circumstances over the years. He added that the concerted efforts of both sides of the UAE and the UNHCR will bring additional gains to the beneficiaries of their programs in Pakistan and will add a new dimension to their future projects. There is now another way to get fit in Dubai, as the Road and Transport Authority have increased the number of cycling tracks here in the Emirates. In keeping with its strategy to expand the city's bicycle lane network by 50 kilometres annually, more than 100 kilometres of tracks have so far been established. There is now a 23 kilometre long track along Jumeirah Street, a 1.4 kilometre track along street number 7, linking Jumeirah with Al Mankul Street, a 1.6 kilometre track at the Mall of the Emirates Station, and a 67 kilometre track spanning C Al Salam Road and Al Qudra Road. They have also added 11 kilometres of track at the centre of Bur Dubai along Al Fahidi, Al Fala, Al Gubeba and Al Hassan roads. In the pipeline are tracks in Al Basha, Al Kawanij, Al Waka, Al Kuz 3, Al Sufu, Al Mamza Park, and Mushrif Park. According to the RTA, they are also considering building cycle lanes in new residential developments, parks, and around shopping malls. The Sharjah municipality fined 83 stores for violating hygiene standards and confiscated about 720 kilograms of various foodstuffs during a special campaign on groceries and supermarkets last month. The inspectors of the food control section at the Department of Health visited around 1,200 locations during the campaign and inspected all grocery stores and supermarkets. The municipality called for a healthy environment for the storage and preservation of food for the safety of consumers. Health and medical care for children continues to be a priority in the UAE. al Kazmi Hospital in Sharjah is slated to open next year and the 200-bed facility will specialise in gynaecology, obstetrics and paediatrics. Located behind the main al Kazmi Hospital, it will have 72 beds for maternity care, 76 for obstetrics and 52 for children. The 350 million dirham government hospital will be the first of its kind in the region, according to company officials. In an effort to cater to the needs of children, they will also offer keyhole surgery as a main highlight and will handle paediatric cases from the Ministry of Health hospitals. There will be rooms and beds for premature babies, a paediatric intensive care unit, four operating theatres, a central laboratory, a blood bank and a pharmacy. It will also serve as a research and training hospital for students. Discovery Gardens has been hit with a second round of floods as water flooded the main road behind Ibn Petita Mall on Saturday night. Reports have revealed that residents reported a flood on the main road near the cinema at Ibn Battuta. There has been no official announcement as to the cause of the flooding. This comes after a 1.2 metre diameter pipe cracked and burst on the night of July the 18th, releasing a lot of water into the area. Many Indian expats end up in debt even after working in the Gulf for over a decade. That's according to a UAE-based financial consultant. 
Based on a recent survey, those earning between 500 and 40,000 dirhams per month often find themselves in the same boat and have to deal with debt problems. The survey titled Attitude to Live Beyond Means Leaves Expats in Debt revealed that about 34% of the 10,100 low and middle income respondents do not save money at all from their income. 66% use their money for non-productive purposes, according to KV Shamsuhadeen, the chairman of the UA-based Pravisi Bandu Welfare Trust. As a finance guidance counsellor, he says the lack of savings for non-resident Indians, or NRIs, is too common. In fact, 31% remit money every month, but only 2% of families in India save from the remittances received. Only 5% of the respondents are confident in living the same comfortable life should they have to return back home. They tried to build a big house, that also beyond their uh, means. Sometimes they will buy uh, mod or, or, or vehicles. Sometimes they spend the daily lifestyle or so, luxury type. So whatever money they are receiving, they are spending. Generally, people are overconfident about the life outside India. They are not realizing there is no guarantee for the work they have. He may lose the job. Sometimes his health condition may worsen. Many reasons. Sometimes the family reason they compel to go and stay back home. These are the things happen any time. So I always want, this is the things you have to think about. For that, you have plan your future by regularly invest saving, regularly investing from the earning. With 5 million NRIs living and working across the Gulf region, Shamsuddin says it is important for everyone to start saving and invest at least 20% of their earnings. He said the increasing cost of living in the GCC and loans taken by NRIs to pay agents in India for visas to get to the Gulf are among the factors affecting their saving ability. The report also revealed that 98% of families' lives improved after a member of the family left to work abroad. However, the majority of NRIs sacrificed individual personal lifestyle, accommodation and food. Living within one's own means makes a huge difference. A person who is saving X amount in the mutual fund every month. That means systematic investment plan, we can say. If you're doing about 10 years or 20 years, he will be getting an income at least four times of his monthly contribution of today when they return back. His capital will be there intact, but he can draw a regular income to look after the family. So it is so simple if one decided to do something. And finally, the UA's largest hotel suite goes to the Royal Suite at the St. Regis Sadiat Island Resort in the capital, as announced on the hotel's website. The duplex suite covers 2,100 square metres and boasts four bedrooms at the resort's west wing, which will set you back 130,000 dirhams per night. The suite also offers a butler service, a private spa treatment room and a sauna, a reflective water feature and artwork from around the world. Travellers can also experience a mini cinema as well as a games room, a spacious terrace with a bar and outdoor swimming pool.